Hi, today we're going to look at the uh, second part of the series on partitioning and uh, I'm going to go ahead and run a script that will actually create and execute all the things you need to create a partition or basically partition a table. Uh, this is fairly straightforward, it's been done plenty of times before so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the script and explain what I'm doing in the script obviously I will share this, uh, the details of the script on the blog where you can uh, download it from and uh, the idea here is just to give you an idea about what it takes to implement a partition and uh, if you've already watched the first part of the video you know uh, what the theory or what the, uh, the technical aspect behind partitioning is and where it is useful versus uh, where probably you don't need it now Let's go ahead today in this particular video just implement partitioning and after this I will go ahead and show you uh, in the next video how you can actually implement a higher uh, availability so to speak with the database when you have partition tables implemented. Essentially what I'm trying to show you in that video will be uh, to go ahead and implement partitioning in order to reduce the SLA or reduce the uh, the amount of time it will take you to bring back your database in the event of a disaster. Now what that means is basically we're going to do a piecemeal restore but uh, for the moment let's look at the video on uh, partitioning and how to implement it. So as you can see I've got the script in front of me and there's a lot of comments here. If you read through the comments that's pretty much uh, going to give you the same information that uh, I'm going to go ahead and mention here right now. Uh, let's look at the first line. I'm going to go ahead and create a database for partitioning, obviously. Uh, the intention being that this is a demonstration, so I'll go ahead and create the database. And then I use the database. Now, once the database is created, as you might remember from the first video, we need to add a file group. So I'm saying alter the database and add a file group called secondary. So select that, and when we run the uh, the catalog view you can see that we've got a new file group it's called secondary now a file group on its own is useless so we need to add some files into the file group in this particular case I'm adding one additional NDF file and you can see here that it's on my x86 uh, program files for uh, SQL Server 2014 and again you will see that this particular file group that I'm creating or this particular file NDF file that I'm creating is going to be mapped to the secondary file group so let's go ahead and just say alter the database, add a file called secondary data file stored in this location and add it to the file group called secondary. At this point I've got the very basic components required to go ahead and implement partitioning. I've got file groups and I've got files. But even at this point SQL Server doesn't know how to distribute the data between the files that we have associated with this database. And that's where the partition function comes into place. Now, ideally the partition function and the partition scheme that you see here are the core essential parts of uh, implementing a partition. And they have different roles or responsibilities as far as how the data gets redirected. So let's look at the partition function first. The syntax is very straightforward. It says create a partition function, give it a name, and this particular partition function, it accepts an integer data type. So you can see that I specified that the data type is integer and that range that this integer data type needs to use in order to partition the data is from 0 or minus infinity to 500, 501 to 1000, 1001 to 20,000, 20,001 to 60,000 and 60,000 to plus infinity. Now the reason for the differentiation that you see here between minus infinity to 500 is because we are using the function left over here. Essentially what this means is that the boundary condition ends at the number 500. Now if I had replaced this with range right then what that would mean is that even though I specify 500 here what's going to happen is that it's gonna stop at 499. So essentially what will happen here is that it will be minus infinity to 499 followed by 500 to 999 and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead leave it at left and we're going to create a partition function that's going to split our data based on these boundary conditions that we specified so all the data from 0 or uh, minus infinity to 500 is going to lie in one file 
and then 501 to 1000 is going to lie in another file and like that we're basically splitting the data depending on the value that we get for this integer column so go ahead select execute and at this point we've got a partition function which has defined the boundary conditions of how the data needs to be split but we still haven't mentioned where the split data needs to be located or where the data that gets split by this function needs to be moved to and in order to do that we need to go ahead and create a pa partition scheme so this partition scheme that you can see here is basically create a partition scheme give it a name as partition and then using this particular partition function the one that we've just created previously so this scheme knows that it is supposed to look up the data based on whatever output the partition function gives and as a result you'll see that the partition function in turn splits the data into a number of groups and each of these groups in turn need to be now mapped with a particular file group so you'll see that we've got minus infinity to plus uh, minus infinity to 500 being sent into the primary file group followed by 501 to 1000 being sent into the secondary file group 1001 to uh, 20,000 being sent back into the primary now the reason for this is because as a demonstration I'm only creating two file groups and uh, I'm oscillating or basically uh, shifting between one file group and the other if you were trying to implement something that's more uh, traditional what you'll create is maybe a file group called 2011 file group called 2012 2013 2014 2015 and so on the intention being that all the data for the year 2011 gets shifted into this particular file into this particular uh, file group and how do you get that value of 2013 2014 well you could simply just use something like um, select year of let's assume this date that we have here when you do this you'll get the value which is ultimately just an integer and uh, this you would probably use as a computed column in one of your tables that need to be partitioned and as a result it will then be implemented in the uh, partition function and cascade down into the uh, partition scheme as well so uh, you'll s you'll notice here that I've got minus infinity uh, minus infinity 500 going into the first file group this range going on over here this one over here and this one over here so I've got two additional file groups here that I don't really use at the moment so there's no harm in creating it because you can always split the function later on and then that will automatically redirect or remap to whichever file group is needed but uh, as a result you at least need a minimum of how many of the boundary conditions that you have here if you have more that shouldn't be a problem but you can have less so let's create our partition scheme now so you'll see that the partition scheme has said that it's been created successfully and the secondary is marked as the next used file group in the partition scheme. Now that we've gone ahead and created a function and we've created a partition scheme, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and create a table that will use the partition scheme in order to segregate the data. So in this particular table, you'll see that I'm using an identity column so that I have a sequential list or number and that identity column value is what I'll be using as the column on which the bifurcation needs to happen. So if you look here, it says that create a table and the traditional create table syntax, except if you notice here now, when you say on, it, you're not specifying a, sp a particular uh, file group like primary or secondary. You're saying that I don't know which file group I need to use, but that file group that I need to use would be determined by the partition scheme. And the partition scheme in turn will look up the value coming from the ID column, which is an integer data type. So if you reverse this flow, you'll see that we've created a table, it's got an identity column. The identity column will be passed to the partition scheme. The partition scheme in turn will pass that value to the partition function. The function in turn will identify the boundary conditions and return to the scheme the file group in which this particular data needs to be located. And that's pretty much it really. So if you go ahead and select this, execute it, and uh, let's create maybe around uh, 1500 rows here and insert you'll see that we've got our data and at 500 it's been split
there we go so that's it for uh, the partitioning video i'll leave the script on the blog you can pick it up from there and uh, thank you for watching